and welcome to New York City Atheist Live on Tape, brought to you by New York City Atheists. I'm your host, Dennis Horvitz, the David Letterman of the Hopelessly Damned, taping mm -hmm. from uh, one of our Sunday brunches. And our guest uh, this afternoon, this evening for you, is Dr. Vijayan, who is the uh, executive director of the renowned India Atheist Center in the southern city of uh, Vijayvada, uh, which is said to be the first such atheist center in the world. Um, the India Atheist Center was, has won an International Humanist Award in Oslo in 1986 and was, was founded in 1940 uh, by his father, Gora, who was a close uh, acquaintance of Mahatma Gandhi. Today, 68 years later, the India Atheist Center boasts three four-story buildings that contain a hospital, dormitories for poor women and widows, a working women's hostel, uh, working women's hostel uh, a science center, classrooms, and, believe it or not, a dance school. Ken, that's what we need. That's it. We need, it. We need an atheist dance school. The that's atheist it. rag. The atheist rag, yes. The center today, the India Atheist Center today, is operated by the nine children of Bora and Sarasvati, all of whom work in the center as doctors, engineers, teachers, or social workers. Dr. Vijayam is finishing uh, a month-long tour which began in Washington, D.C. and crisscrossed the United States to Minneapolis, Fresno, Long Beach, California, and back east to Philadelphia. We are very pleased and proud to have him as our guest today uh, at New York City Atheist Brunch. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Vijayan. Another important thing what it is said to be is promotion of science and scientific outlook. Science brought all the fear to the people. In fact, this is the age of science. In the West, we have common between science and religion. But if you look to India, or the developing world, there is no conflict between science and religion. There is conflict between religion and social reform. Religion and social reform. That is why every social reformer in the developing world was not an atheist. In fact, he was an atheist. That is why we could bring social change. As long as we talk in India and other places, they tolerate. But if you cross the religion boundary, if you cross the caste boundary, if you cross the boundary of untouchability, then they oppose us. That is where we say change will come only when we save openly do it openly, then society will change. So the center is involved in these kinds of activities. We also work with the street children. We, 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 in the center, we work with 5,000 street children. We are also fighting against HIV AIDS and HIV AIDS disease. And we, we are also working for improvement uh, of eyesight to the people. So what we are doing is Eye donation is very important, cardiac transplant operations, all of you are familiar. There is no need to be blind if people donate their eyes after death. Perhaps you know, Sri Lanka is a very small country in, uh, down below India. Sri Lanka is a Buddhist country, so that's why they don't have any taboo. So many eyes are flown after death to India for cardiac transplant. But whereas, even though we have more than a billion population, they are not donating eyes. So we at the Tea Center, we have a cardiac transplant center. And all the done free. All the doctors come and do the free service. We have done so far 500 cardiac transplant operations. So these things can be done. I will tell you one secret, sir. And madam, that is, everyone has free time. Everyone has free time. If you can synchronize the free time, put it to constructive use, you can do what this. In fact, at this center is not dealing with money. It is doing all the work with goodwill. We are doing, if we are sure of ourselves, others can be sure of us. If you are sure, about your mission in life, others come and join you because they see there is a better this madness where we are bringing something good to society. In that way, 
we are doing all these activities. Not with money is required, no doubt about it. But money will come when we do firmly committed manner that is very important. I would like to touch two or three other things here. Social reform is an important aspect as far as women are concerned. In the 19th century, we fought against widow court, we fought against infanticide, we fought about many social evils. In the modern society, what we require is equality for women in the political representation. You know, in all the local bodies uh, in India, 30% reservation is there for women. They are coming up very well. In fact, even in parliament, debate is going on to bring more women into parliament and assembly. Yes. These, these things, every time who is the bill? Men politicians are debating the bill. They say, if women compete in this field also, we will be out of business. <laughs> so we, we, we have political dimension, and our political dimension is equality must be there, economic equality must be there, and also social equality must be there, and political equality must be there, and women must be properly represented. I don't want to take much of your time because I want to leave more time for questions and answers. But I would like to say this much that we are not the minority, but we are the majority. Yes. We should get rid of our minority problems. All over the world, atheists and progressive minded people are the majority. But we suffer with minority conflicts. Oh, nice. Let us get rid of that. <laughs> Women are the majority, top plus one at least, but they feel that they are inferior. The moment they got rid of their inferiority, they could do wonders. Similarly, we at these racists and free thinkers say that the world belongs to those who dare and act. Religion is a thing of the past. Religion has no future, no doubt about it. Many of them are 10 to 5 religious people. It's like a job, any other job. That we have realized that. <laughs> the moment we realize that, that it's very easy. So it's what we have to do is now build alternatives. Do something. And take up the problems of the poor and the downtrodden. And that is important. Sir, I would like to bring one more thing that is we should take up the mainstream issues. We should not be in the periphery. When we champion the causes, let us take up the equality of issue. Let us take up the liberty issue. Let us take up the issue of democracy. So what confronts people, that is important. Let us start, let us prioritize our activities. Let us help people who are in distress. Let us empower people who are backward. Let us try to make, build a new society. That is the type of work we are doing, even though Gora and Sarasthi Gora, both of uh, them are dead, but still, this center is like a beacon light continuing its activities. What we say is what we can do here in India, you can do here in America also, on your, uh, with your tremendous resources and abilities. You are think tanks, all of you are think tanks. You can have a global vision, do all these things, and in that way we can move our, our march forward. It is not possible for me to show the uh, video here, uh, but I will show you later. That, uh, some way we, we will look for some, uh, some way you will get the material here so that you can see. In India, we, we fight superstitions, babas. I, I brought a DVD also, but I could not show it. Sai Baba. There is no difference between the Babas and the magicians. But magicians are honest. <laughs> they say it's a sleight of hand. Or they turn our attention and do some trick. Sai Baba also doing the same trick, nothing else. The Babas are also doing ash and all these things are tricks. So what we have done is we have we are training hundreds of magicians to go into the villages, show them the tricks, <laughs> explain to the people, Baba is also a magician. Not more than that. Yeah. 
Uh, maybe, maybe they are also magicians. So in that way we have to take out the uh, godliness content from that. So we can challenge that. And what most important thing is, we should have at least funding organizations in the long run. The church going people, they contribute something to their church. That's why churches are growing. Our slogan should be, tax the church. Our leaders want to, our leaders want to privatize everything, but not church power. <laughs> Yeah. If they want to give everything to the private enterprise, taking away from the government, even welfare and everything they want to do away, but why can't they do away the special concession to the churches? That's the question. We have to raise that question a taxi church. We have that slogan here and it must be vigorously pursued. Let us put our brains together. How will we build a better society? The progress in society is possible because of atheism, because of humanism, because of free thought. Progress of atheism, because of why Middle Ages were known as Dark Ages. If you read any good history book, the subtitle of the Middle Ages is Dark Ages. Yeah. Why? Because when religion is all pervasive, there will be no progress. When religion is all pervasive, there is no scope for advancement. That is why in the Middle Ages, the historian of the Middle Ages has dark cases. Perhaps you know, Vesalius was father of the modern anatomy and physiology. He was not allowed to dissect human bodies. So he was sent on the pilgrimage and he died. Because of that folly of church, for 500 years, people were dead without any kind of medical Darknesses. That's a foolishness. And similarly, sex education even today, they say we should not do sex education. Kindly look into who promoted sex education. In the United States, in the 19th century, Dr. Norton wrote a book called Fruits of Philosophy. And for writing that book, he was put in jail for six months. The same book was reproduced by Charles Broadway in England and Annie Vicent, and both were arrested. It was known as Annie Vicent case. In the court, they went to the extent that even in the medical college, you should not talk about sex. <laughs> or sex organs. Perhaps you know, Bertrand Russell also mentions that in the in Rome medical colleges, till the middle of the 20th century. They remove sex organs to give to doctors, even from the corpses. So in that way, what kind of gynecological treatment women get if doctors are ignorant of our own human physiology? My brother Dr. Samaram has written so far 197 books. Three books talked of 200 books. And we are bringing out medical education to the doorstep of the common people. So in that way, all of you can write in the simple English, kindly publish thousands of books and flood the market with that so that people can be liberated from misconceptions. We have a mission in life. We have only one life. This can say we'll do something in the next life, but we can't postpone that. Kindly but do we have only one life? Let us be meaningful, useful, fruitful, and build a new society where we, uh, we and our children can live happily. I don't want to take much of your time, but I would like to add one more point in end. That was we have organized so far six world ethics conferences, and seventh world ethics conference is going to take place in India on January five, six, and seven. Already we have given you notice. If you can come, wonderful. If you can't come, say some good work is going on. And kindly send all of your good wishes to the conference and we'll read out your messages there. And let us tell every friend that, that atheism is spreading the global force. So that kind of thing we have to do. And on behalf of this center, we send you all the greetings here and I 
leave the floor open for questions and answers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and you can tell the ATS from New York City this is in our very, very best. And we were very proud of them and, uh, and for extending what we can contribute to their continued mission to the ATS. Do so, we have a question? Uh, you said that, I think you said in England they were starting to teach humanism and atheism. Can you tell us more about that? That's very interesting. You are too close to the truth, that's why I have to tell about that. <laughs> uh, but in England, they have decided churches are for sale. You know, more, many churches are on sale. Because there are people are not coming to churches. Young people are totally indifferent to religion. So that is why atheism has come to stay. You know, who realized this? Pope himself realized. <laughs> in 1980s, he started a secretariat for non-believers in Vatican. Even, even now they have a second area of non-believers and first they call it atheism and dialogue. That was the name of our name on the journal. And then they said then they said faith and culture. Now they say culture and faith. The names of these magazines are changing, but the content is the same. We received that journal at our center. I read them carefully. What I notice is Secularization is taking place that they have fully understood. Not only secularization, people are moving away from religion that also they understand. But that is why really the Pope is watching all of you carefully what you are doing. <laughs> what the atheists are doing. He wanted to counter that. But we are smart enough. Because we are the majority. We are the majority. And science is on our side. It is the science plus scientific outlook that is going to change the world. We have to promote scientific temper, social outlook, and individual personality. In fact, that is our slogan. We say promote science, develop scientific outlook, and also develop individual personality. In that way, we can bring change. In England, we are very happy that in the schools, they started teaching humanism, atheism, and racism. And that was already happening in Scandinavian countries. In May, whether they teach about atheism or they teach atheism, not much difference is a difference in degree. So very soon they will open up different gates for people to understand atheism. Any other questions? Um, is there any um out of the closet atheists in India, in the member of parliament. Is there no, no, in the United States, no, what he can, can say that he's an atheist. They get away with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sir, there are many, and my sister. Out of the closet atheists. Yes, my sister, Mrs. Vidya, was member of parliament twice in 1980 to 84, and again 1998. Uh, to 2000, uh, uh, 1988 to 1990, she was member of parliament twice, and she was openly declared, she has openly declared that she had an atheist. And if you look into the list of uh, members' list, that they clearly state that she is an atheist. And we have many atheists. Perhaps you know, once, once, if anyone takes vote in India, many of the people do not take vote in the name of God in India. Our Prime Minister doesn't take votes in the name of God. Sonia Gandhi, for instance, she did not take votes in the name of God. Many ministers, when they issue office, they don't take votes in the name of God. They say, I solemnly affirm, thanks to Charles Broadlaw's variant fight in the 19th century, in the Indian constitution, we have a clear provision everywhere, right from village panchayat to parliament, and up to the president, they take work in the name of God, either in the name of God or in the name saying that I solemnly affirm. So many people, I understand, nearly 40% of the ministers, they take work, they take work in the name of, I, they say, I solemnly affirm. There are very many atheists, 
in, in the past. We have to, we have to work hard and we will certainly achieve. What, what speaks and let us fight here, what happened is Christianity is a missionary religion. We say, we have a problem, we say, on the bunion tree nothing grows. On the bunion tree nothing grows. So that is why uh, it is not, okay. it may be difficult, but it's not on the state. But still, many things have to be done by people in this country, in yeah. even in the United States. You have to do a lot of counseling. People have so many problems. And you can do a lot of work. In India, we have taken up because Religious people say, social work is our monopoly. Is what? Social work is our monopoly, they say. Yes. And we say, to do good to fellow human beings, there is no need for belief in God. That we want to establish. When we have a this conference, you know, All India Radio and the Doordashim also broadcast our proceedings. They do it. We, we claim our, 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 our place in the society. So social work, it's humanitarian work, it's not only humanitarian work, but it's the humanist work and the thief work. It is our duty to help fellow human being. That's why we have taken up that work. And it's going on very well. Whether you are thieves or a thief, you have to work with the same people, the poor people. So that kind of thing, that is why we are entering into every field that is available. And in that way, we want to, I have given you a small booklet you may glance through, it will give you an idea of what kind of work we are doing. Uh, 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 if the governments do, wonderful. If the government don't do, we can supplement the work or we can stop the work. Thank you. On that, and something you mentioned in the booklet, uh, you speak of counseling for problems of dowry and various social reform, and I just wanted to find out what the progress is in the fight against bride burning. Is that bride burning? Bride burning. The moment education spreads, a lot of changes will take place. Saraste Bora always used to say, it is not enough if we have women's liberation. What is required in the world is men's liberation. <laughs> Without men's liberation, because they are the oppressors, uh, they are the culprits. So the attitude of women must change. That is not enough. Attitude of towards women also must change. And men should change, mend their ways, and treat them as equals. In our center, we, we have a home where we keep at least 100 women at a time, but so far we have 10,000 women with social problems. Social activities are such. If, unless you have political power, you can't achieve political change. But if you have, if you, if you determine, you can do social work. For instance, in the United States, you have very many people with problems. Why don't you help them? Bring all of them into your fold. The, we, we have alcoholism is there, drug addiction is there, crime rate is there. Many people are in the jails. It's strange in the United States. You have so many people in jails. Can't we work with them? That's why we started criminal reform to work in, in, in our center. Uh, no one is a born doctor. Doctor's son is not a doctor. Lion's son is not a lawyer. Engineer's son is not an engineer. Politician's son is not a politician. But a criminal's son is a criminal. And he's, he's segregated and put into the settlements. That was the criminology of the 19th century Britain. We followed that. So they were put into various settlements. And once we got independence, we helped in breaking the settlements. But it is not enough. We have to bring them into the mainstream. That is why Ethics Center took up the work for criminal reformation. For the last 40 years, we have been working with them. Great change has taken place. Government also cooperated with that. Similarly, we fight witchcraft and sorcery. Witchcraft and sorcery. People are killed in the name of witchcraft and sorcery in India. So the government asked us, they said, you at least send the people, come and help us in dispelling this one. So we make a common cause, we, we carry forward our work in the villages, and a lot of change has come. So we can do a lot of social work. Yeah, but a quick question. Uh, it's, I said in the introduction that your father was, was an associate of a 
appointments of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Could you just sort of give us just a little bit of information as to what capacity uh, he knew uh, Mahatma Gandhi? Thanks, sir. First, I want to talk about Sai Baba. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Sai Baba, like any other magician, whatever he produces, he claims that he's producing something out of nothing. It defies physics principles. But so far, whatever he produced, it was a Seiko watch, which was in existence, and he did not produce anything which he did not put into his hand, palm. So we say, kindly produce a pumpkin. <laughs> if we can maintain like one pumpkin, that is enough for us. <laughs> but he will not do that. He will give a gold chain. So what, what we say is, you give gold chains to poor people and ask to the rich people. But he will give rich people gold to make them much more wealthier and ask to the poor people. And we say, at least there will be some kind of equality. And he claims uh, that he put Tal Brooks book also says that, and if he put his finger into water, it turned into petrol. So we say, wonderful, we make you petroleum minister because that's <laughs> <laughs>